Blessed morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us enter into the world. For God so loved the world. Today's Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. There are three points to our sharing. God is love, Jesus is the light and self-giving love. Number one, God is love. Do we really believe that God is love? Do we entrust ourselves in faith to our God who is faithful as we experience crisis, sickness, shortcomings or even tragedies? This passage in John's Gospel speaks of the great breadth and width of God's love that is not just for a few or for a single nation. God's love is redemptive love that embraces the whole world and a personal love for each and every individual. Jesus shows us the extent of God's love when he opened his arms on the cross so we could be reconciled to friendship with God. Greater love is manifested in the cost and sacrifice of the giver. I want to give a testimony of God's love in the midst of sickness. I am a cancer survivor entering into my fifth year. I was diagnosed having second stage breast cancer. I seek the Lord in prayer. I did not question the Lord, why me? Because I didn't doubt that he loves me. Instead, I asked the Lord, what are the lessons that he wants to teach me? And so, the Lord impressed upon me to be like Mary in the parable of Martha and Mary, to sit at his feet in prayer. And he also reminded me of the incident when four friends lowered the paralytic man from the roof. Seeing the faith of these friends, Jesus told this man that his sins are forgiven, then instructed him to get up, pick up his stretcher, and go home. And so, because of these impressions, I spent more time in prayer and I informed my family, my siblings, and brothers and sisters in the community who supported me in prayer. Now, as a Catholic, together with Tony, we went to see our parish priest who administered the anointing of the sick over me. I had to undergo six chemotherapy and 17 Herceptin therapy followed by 33 radiotherapy. I want to quote Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6, In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And so, during my chemotherapy and Herceptin therapy, it often lasts for 8 hours. I would bring along my prayer bag. I would spend this time in prayer, which would include a time of praise and worship, reflecting on God's word for the day, reciting the rosary, and at 3 p.m. to recite the Divine Mercy Chaplet, followed by reading of spiritual books. After this treatment, I had to go for daily treatment of radiotherapy which lasts for 7 minutes. Weekends and public holidays, there were no treatment. So during the radiotherapy, I would be lying down and at the click of a button, I would be sent into the tunnel. I would then sing the song, Enter In. And when I'm inside the tunnel, I would hear the sound of the switch to project the radiotherapy. I would sing the song, There Shall Be Showers of Blessings. And all this would take seven minutes before the procedure ends. At the end of this, I feel myself being energized. And so, what lessons can I learn from this experience? In John chapter 9, verses 1 to 3, Jesus was questioned whether the man born blind was the sin of the man himself or the sin of his parents. 
And Jesus replied that it was neither. The man was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. And so the lessons that I have learned is that in any crisis, relationship breakdown, sickness or even tragedies, I need to acknowledge Jesus so that God would be glorified in that experience. The second point, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is Jesus is the light of the world. In John chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, it says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We are reminded of exactly who Jesus is and why he came. He came as a light into the darkness to be followed into the light of life. So it is that we must live as people of the light, saved from darkness of sin and death. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we may lose sight of our salvation in Christ. So often we get caught up in our good works that we forget that we cannot earn us our salvation. We need to remember that mercy that we have received. We need to be grateful for Jesus' mercy and grace. And the third point, my brothers and sisters, is Jesus' self-giving love. In the washing of the feet of his disciples, Jesus exemplifies the nature of divine love that is eternal self-giving. The nature of a Messiah King who comes not to be served, but to serve. This is the foundation of the command to love as we have always been loved by God. When we empty ourselves and become vessels of his love, we join with Jesus in that great sacrifice of thanksgiving that brings salvation to the world. And so, for our reflection, let us entrust ourselves to the love of God unlike any other love, a divine love without limits or conditions, a love that never forgets. God the Father is inviting each and every one of us to enter into a relationship of an intimate, personal and life-giving communion. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, I accept your invitation to a personal relationship with you. May your love consume and transform my heart to free me, to desire you above all else, and to love others graciously as you have been so gracious towards me. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, brothers and sisters, and God bless.